favorite one of my favorite is when they had Gary Coleman Gary Coleman as uh oh! guest on a Christmas episode with the Funzos. That. Yeah. And um th- there's this uh I remember th- I remember the way that would end. Cause um he's what like you yeah. talking about everybody, everybody. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god. Rest was in that... peace, rest in peace, Gary Coleman. Yeah, was that really Gary Coleman? I'm sure it was. No, it was him. Coleman. No, that oh was, god. Was. That was such a good episode. Merry I remember like back in the day when that episode I mean, first of all, I remember when that episode was new. That's how old fucking old I am. But I remember, like, well, that was a later season. That was, like, season eight or nine, I think, by that point. But I do remember, like, uh, going to school. And then, like, me and all my friends were like, Merry Christmas, everybody. You know? yeah, oh, man. That. that was the best. Um, yeah, that was a good episode. I, I forgot what the fuck that, um, the rest of the episode was about. I think he worked at a car lot, if I'm not mistaken. No, he <laughs> was a security of... guard. Oh, because he really he they... was a security guard. I think he really, yeah. No, remember they, that? Did one of the, they did one of those... Um... Um, things at the schools where they're trying to get the kids to create a a, t- a toy, and it was Funzo. It was like a Furby oh, knockoff, and he right. was security because they broke in the the factory to find out what's the uh, what's the deal with these um uh, Furby kind of uh, machines. Oh yeah, sorry, Manuel. Yeah, I realized uh, too late that there was no light going off on there except for like maybe my mic, and so it's fixed now. But it wasn't when you tried to do the reintroduction. Oh. Hi so everyone. With that? This is all. This is Ultra Podcast Z one forty seven. We had a lovely talk of me reminiscing of my personal favorite Christmas thing, and it's lost forever. We'll, we'll fucking do that later, maybe if we have time. But it, TLDR, just to cut to the chase, it was the Tales of the Crypt Silent Night, Silent Night, Deadly Night um, episode, and then that's pretty much all we talked about. We talked about that, then we moved on to the Simpsons, and you caught the tail end of that right now. So we didn't do. We didn't. We didn't miss much. Thank God. Yep. Thank you, Yuji, for catching that. I'm Manuel. That's Weston. This is 140, 157, episode 157. Um, and I'll fix this in editing. I'll figure this out. Yeah. I, I might go I might go back and I'll just put in the part about how it's so great. And I'll just I'll, I'll just I'll steal the episode. <laughs> Get his copyright claim, just put it in there. No, I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna do that. Do it. Anyway. <laughs> Don't anger the mouse or uh, HBO. Mouse. Yeah, I was gonna say it's actually HBO, which is much worse because I think they own AT and or AT and T owns them, and they're my internet service provider. So I'll probably just lose my internet. Um, well, they, got got a they own them until they spin off uh, Discovery Plus or whatever with HBO Max. Oh, are they going to do that? Uh... Apparently. Oh, thank God! I'm just. <laughs> um. Anyway. Anyway. Christmas stuff. I forgot what the fuck we were, we were going to say. There, I was going to talk about some other Christmas special before I jumped into other things. I forgot what the fuck I had in mind. Simpsons. Um, those were all the good ones. We mentioned the, the stealing one. You guys missed that. The Santa's Little Helper shit. Uh, that was the first episode. Um, I guess that's when a lot of shows start because I, I like that was also the Tales of the Crypt uh, fucking debut. Um, but yeah, any other Christmas specials from TV shows that, was, that you could think of, Wesley, before we move into some movies? Um, well, when I when, when when I was a kid, me and my my brothers oh, and sisters, well, we ahead. used to watch um the Cartoon Network um um Christmas specials, and there was a one special that I used to we used to watch traditionally was the Pac Man, the nineteen eighties cartoon Pac Man, and they had a Christmas episode where you they were trying to save, save Santa. I've never seen that episode, but I have the book and record. That I think really? was that went along with it. Yeah, I still have it too. Actually, I found that in storage. It, it's two pieces of media you didn't throw out. Yeah, because yeah, Pac Man. <laughs> but I kept it because uh, there is a pack. It's a Christmas album, but it's like very little music. It's mainly just reading the book, and then yeah. they, uh, you know, you know, like these records are. But it was it's a full record because a lot of these books came with the little records that you know were were shorter, like the Bear Team Bears bullshit. But this was a full record, so it's like a 40-minute album, but most of it's dialogue, and then they'll sing, like, Wish You a Merry Christmas or some bullshit. But yeah, yeah, it's so funny you mentioned that. I don't have a record player right now, like, available. Like, you know, I, I should, because apparently that's the trendy thing again. Uh, I was thinking about this the other day. This is kind of off-topic, but it's been like my non-sequitur for the opening. That back in the day, I remember, because uh, Warren bought some records recently at a thrift store that he went to, like, in Vegas, some shit like that. And it got me thinking that when I was younger... I used to go to the thrift stores and to Goodwill and whatever and get the records for a dollar. And I would buy like all this shit, which I'm sure is probably worth. I, I, I treated them like trash. Some of them were really good condition back then, but I would get like Iron Maiden, like Kiss, you know, like Black Sabbath, <laughs> and, like all this good shit. Like, I realize now 
And uh, I, I think I think my sister's uh, rabbit peed on them all one time. So even if I find them, they're probably trash now. But anyways, I just find that amusing. <laughs> that CDs are obsolete, but records are back in vogue now. If anything, anyway, I was gonna say the the Christmas special that popped in my head that I was thinking about uh, a lot lately. One of my favorite ones ever was the Married with Children Christmas one. I know there's a couple of them, but there's one where um where that's a, a Sam Sand- one. Okay, that's the that's the other one I was gonna say. The the first one I was gonna mention real fast was the one where the Santa died on their roof. Oh yeah, and, and like um uh. uh Al, the main character, Al Bundy, he he dresses up as Santa and gets all the kids to like forget and not realize Santa's dead. And uh, the mall was all like, "Oh, we would have given you money for that, but you did it for free, ha ha! Screw you!" And then once they leave, Santa's bag falls, and the bag is full of like coupons for the mall or whatever, and they just like spend all the coupons or some shit. But yeah, there was another one, which is actually my favorite one. Thank you for bringing that up. I just wanted to preface that one because that was the one I remember. Is one yeah, where. I um, that one too. They do It's a Wonderful Life, but Married with Children style. Oh, yeah. And Sam Kinison's The Ghost. Or, not, or he's like, it's kind of a Scrooge thing because I don't think there's a ghost in It's a Wonderful Life. But, um, but it's, it's, it's supposed to be life. his guardian angel, what he, yeah. what he sees. It. There you go. Uh, um, and basically, they, they show, he shows him what his life would be if he was never born, which is the plot to It's a Wonderful Life, by the way. And literally, everyone has a better life. Remember that? That was the whole, that was the whole joke. Um, yeah. it's like everyone's doing well. Like, hi, Budrick, because like the, the son's name Bud. It's like, hi, Budrick, hi, whatever. And like, and no joke. The the reason for the season, the reason like he decides that he can't, like he has to go back to his family and live his life and finish Christmas, isn't because any altruistic motive. It's because he's all like, they're not going to be happy if I'm not happy. Like, like after all they put me through, I want to live. Like, just to ruin their lives. Like, he wants to live just to ruin their lives. And that's a fucking mood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you have uh, nothing else to live for, then you just live to ruin someone. That's your Christmas gift. Just keep keep going, you know, it's the holidays. It's like, someone out there hates you. Like, it's why despising your existence. Continued existence. Just keep existing. There you go. Okay, Manuel. Before yes. we move on uh, to movies, uh, can I throw in yeah, two uh, Christmas sh- or Christmas specials for, for me, or I guess holiday specials because I'm about uh, first one the SpongeBob episode with uh, Bikini Bottom Christmas or whatever it's called where they have that whole yes. big number. It's this Christmas oh, feels like the one. very first Christmas to me, and Squidward has to learn about it or about being a good person in Christmas. <laughs> that one is just joy, and then. And an alternate holiday one that like always sticks in my mind is the Rugrats Hanukkah special, because that's when I first learned about Hanukkah. And right now it's the third night of Hanukkah. <laughs> so happy yeah, Hanukkah to that, all our viewers celebrating. That's true. Like Rugrats is literally taught people because both of the creators were Jewish uh, descent. And th- there's like in the beginning, the, 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 the grandparents from Didi's side, um, Tommy's mom, they're all Jewish. And they're and they you can literally hear them like say oh the, why can't we have this type of cake and they're like hardcore like Yiddish talk. <laughs> I forget which Christmas special it was. It wasn't that one because I, I I don't think I've ever seen the Rugrats one. Um, but I definitely learned about Hanukkah through a Christmas special. Um, and or through a Hanukkah special. Well. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I think it was a Christmas special that was just being inclusive and like, or, yeah, I guess you should say a holiday special more more correctly. Um, that was like, oh, we celebrate Hanukkah too. And I forgot, forgot what the fuck this was. And uh, it was just basically like, oh, this is how. And I think if I'm not mistaken, because I know Hanukkah is one of those like floating holidays, um, as in it literally moves year to year. I'm not just like yeah. derogatory. Early Hanukkah. But, um, yeah. And I think back when I was younger, it was closer to Christmas. And like just through the magic of like that once again, I feel like I'm just saying weird terms to describe this. Um just through the, the, the shifting of like whatever determines this date. It's so early in the year. Well, early, comparatively speaking, early in the holiday season now. Cause it's always yeah. been the start of December. It's like even like I said, when I was younger, it never I don't think it was ever on Christmas, but it was a lot closer. Um at least I remember that for the longest time. I, I'm not sure how it moves. Someone correct me about that. But um depends on the, the Hebrew calendar. Yeah, the Hebrew calendar it's the same, it's the same way with Easter, depending on how, what calendar yeah. it is. Uh Hanukkah is the same thing. 
Apparently there's two Easter's because of that. I don't know if we ever talked about that. We'll save that for Easter one day. But uh, <laughs> there, there, there can be two Easter's depending on reckonings of certain things like that because of that. Like, you know, yeah. a, a traditional Easter and then the Easter, like the cal- like the Gregorian calendar recognizes. But um, yeah. but I, th- there was a, b- before we move on again, one last, this might be my last one, because I wanted to mention this too. I'll never forget that on Futurama, they had a Kwanzaa bot. And even though they made it into a joke, you I learned about Kwanzaa through Futurama. But um oh, same. The, there's, the infamous, the, there's the infamous joke. Well, I actually do remember that too, by the way. But that, that came after. But well, it came after in time wise, but I think I watched it afterwards anyway. But um but that there was the thing where it's like Kwanzaa bots all like, I'm passing out the 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 Kwanzaa the the, the Kwanzaa like book or whatever and it's like what the fuck is kwanzaa <laughs> like that was what the book was called and the whole point was at the very end he's like oh this is what kwanzaa is and uh kwanzaa's relatively new not that there's anything wrong with that but i think at the time when i when like me and western are probably both younger like it was still new like it was one of those it was a newer holiday that uh um well i shouldn't say it's new it's not like somebody quote unquote made it up it, it brought together other like you know traditional things um to uh to create something new so yeah Anyways, go look more into Kwanzaa. I'll have links to that. I, I, I'm yeah. not the person who should be describing Kwanzaa but, to anyone. Manuel, you forget the problem. You're such a boomer that what? every holiday is kind of uh, was new to you at some point. <laughs> yes. I, I, I was here when Jesus was. I, I was the reason they had to go to the to the fucking barn. I was like, no. <laughs> you you refuse to give up your room. <laughs> yes, I refuse to give up my room. It's like, no, nope, uh, I got here first. Yeah, and according to Wikipedia, the first Hanukkah was or Kwanzaa. Was celebrated in 1966. Really? Whoa. I could have sworn it was in the 90s. Nope. Well, it became more mainstream in the 90s. Yeah, I- I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'll say this real fast because I mean, this is mildly off topic. But there was a there was like the whole movement around that time. There's just like movies like this all the time. But there was a bigger one like to like put in more like um, African American culture and things. And I remember that was the um, it definitely was included in like. I, we didn't learn about it in school, but people like at school started mentioning it. And I had this teacher who was really old in elementary school, and um, like she it was her last year; she was retiring like the year we had her, and uh, she didn't like that. Looking back on it, she was probably very racist. <laughs> we didn't have That's any black. Where you learn your racist from from a racist. Yeah, we, we yeah we didn't have any black people in our classroom. God forbid if we did though. Because I'm pretty sure we would have noticed something, like, probably at the time, but looking back on it, I'd probably have been like, yeah, she was racist. And that's the only reason I don't know if she was or wasn't. <laughs> the only reason I meant it is, like, because, like, we were being inclusive, like, you know, which, by the way, all the people are like, oh, people being stupid. No. First of all, be inclusive. But second of all, we were doing this shit when I was a kid. So, uh, but yeah, I remember that was, and but it was new then, relatively speaking, including Kwanzaa. Um... Uh, Sorry, I'm just. We, 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 I remember like there was all these arguments at Party City when I like because uh, we didn't start carrying uh, Kwanzaa things until my last few years there, and so we had years where we did not carry Kwanzaa, and um, and people used to just come in really upset, and I'm like, we'd all be like, we don't know what to tell you. It's like, I, I agree there should be Kwanzaa stuff. We all agree, but yeah. Anyways, everyone go write an angry letter to Party City about that. Tell them to carry more Kwanzaa items. Way ahead of you. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to movies. I just wanted to point that out there, like, and I, not to plug Party City, but I do think they carry Kwanzaa items these days. Um, which I'm not gonna. Sorry, this turned into a Kwanzaa special. Um, this is turned into like we don't know anything about Kwanzaa, but Manuel's gonna talk about it for ten minutes. But whenever I look at Kwanzaa decorations, I was always very confused because it looks like its imagery seems very similar to Hanukkah. I know there's also a candle um, display of some sort. So if you know more and you want to tell me, let me know so I can stop sounding like an ignorant asshole. Anyways, moving on. Wait, Manuel, keep talking. Ignorant asshole? Yes, Manuel, I am an ignorant asshole who only recognizes Kwanzaa because of its uh, candle candle things. Uh, fun fact. Okay. You keep fun going fact, now. Um, I just wanted to have it on screen. Manuel boom explains uh, Kwanzaa. <laughs> god damn you thank you so much <laughs> fun fact that there was a uh, we used to carry hanukkah items as well actually we expanded the hanukkah section while i was at party city because people would buy it so we would get more and more and more of it but um they used to, we used to sell these cookies they were like shortbread cookies first of all party city doesn't sell like things besides candy i fucking love those shortbread cookies so i used to buy those all the time and i think 
I think I would buy them. like as soon as they would show up, I would. You, you remember those animal crackers, the ones that would come in the little box with the little string? Um, I think they famously let the animals out of their cages a couple years back. You know what I'm talking about? They're like little shortbread animal cookies in a little box. Anyway, yeah, circus circus animals. Yes, they were the exact same packaging idea, and they even tasted the same. But they were fucking um like dreidels and like uh menorahs. Is that what you call the candle? Yes. And other Hanukkah items, and like. Um, I used to love them, and I think I, I annoyed more than a few, like act, unknowingly annoyed more than a few uh, customers, because they would come and actually want to purchase them for their Hanukkah celebrations. And of course, of course, the other employees are going to say like Manuel bought them all, and I'm not going to say I bought them all. But they would show up. It's like, why do you only have two of these left? And I'm like, <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> Manuel just wanted cookies. I just wanted cookies exactly. He did it all. I could have went. Some, I could have went somewhere. I just wanted the Jewish them. chocolate. That's all I wanted, the Jewish chocolates. I actually did. We used to always have those left over because we would buy, like, the the, the gelt. We used to always have yeah. that left over because not because not of any particular reason, just that we would have so much of it that mm-hmm. just by nature, that's, that's left over and you can't really get rid of that stuff, like, you know, postseason. I mean, like, you couldn't keep that postseason, I meant to say, because it's so tied to Hanukkah. So, um... I used to eat so much gelt all the time. And it does taste different. It's like kosher chocolate, which I'm not sure what the fuck the difference is. Manuel explains something he doesn't know again. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, how does, about movies. How is chocolate kosher? Anyways. <laughs> Manuel does... Oh, I gotta shut up now. <laughs> Dangerous territory there, Manuel. Anyways. Um, movies. Uh... One of my fa- one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time, and I did not know that it was like hate quote unquote hated until like I discovered internet movie reviewers like a few years ago, like many years ago, but like you know relatively speaking, is um I'll be home for Christmas. Is that what it's called? The Jonathan Taylor Thomas yeah, one. Yeah, I'll be home for Christmas. I, I fucking hate that movie. love that. Okay, see, I apparently hate that movie. everyone hates that movie. I fucking it was love that so movie. Bad. I love that movie. Apparently, everyone hates it. Um. I love it. It's one of my favorite ones ever. Also, there's the part where, uh, um, fuck, who the hell's the girl in that movie? Um, don't remember the girl's name off the top of my head. I can't remember off the top of my head. But she was also one of my like um, childhood childhood ish crushes at the time. I don't remember the fuck plays her, but um, I do remember this is the part where she's singing uh, Doctor Jones the the fucking Aqua song and uh, blows my mind. But anyways, uh, it's a great movie. I think it's great. Apparently, everyone hates it. Everyone likes to dunk on it. It came out at the height of the Jonathan Taylor Thomas like um, hype train, so a lot of people Jessica were like, oh. Beale. "Yeah, Jessica, Jessica Beale. Beale." It was Jessica Beale. I, I had a feeling it was. I didn't want to say it because I wasn't sure, but uh, yeah, um, she's cute. And <laughs> so I liked the movie because she was in it. Because he was in it. I, I love Home Improvement back then. Fuck Tim Allen these days, but I love Home Improvement because he, you know, <laughs> he was in it. Um, and uh, I think that was after he left the show. But it was a good movie. The whole premise is the really fast version is like he's supposed to go. Um, he's supposed to go get a car from his family. Like the family's like, oh, if you make it here by Christmas Eve before we put dinner out, you get a car. And he's a selfish asshole, so he's gonna go do it. Um, but uh, what, before he's able to do it, some kids like basically leave him to die in the desert in a Santa outfit, and hilarity ensues as he tries to go claim his car and prove he's not an asshole. I love the movie, but apparently everyone hates it. Yeah, it's throws... one of my least favorite. <laughs> he throws up in the backseat of the car those old ladies. They're like playing like fucking uh, that Tom Jones? Is that his name? <laughs> you know? Yeah, Tom Jones. You're right. It's something okay to be loved by everyone. What's that song? It's not unusual. There you go. I, I can't remember. The, the, the Carlton, Carlton, the Carlton song. <laughs> but... Yes, the Carlton song. That's right. That's what made it more popular. <laughs> but anyways, that movie's great. It's on Disney Plus. If you, if everyone has that, go watch it. It's great. Um, no, so I think it's great. Watch it. <laughs> you know, don't watch it. What's your favorite one from you, Weston? Oh, uh, mine's. I'm gonna probably go be a boomer for a moment because my favorite is. Um... Oh shit, my mask. The Laura on Hardy um Babes in Toyland. Whoa, oh. okay. That's Man, that. Boomer talk about <laughs> back in my day. So I mean in the chat. Um what's funny about Babes in Toyland is I did used to like that one, but I don't remember it. So tell me some more about it. Okay, uh, if you're familiar with the uh, Laura and Hardy, the 
they're Comedy like com- they're comedians from the Three Stooges days. Uh, basically, yeah. just Babes in Toyland. Premises is what if you've seen the Babes in Toyland is is that they're trying to get money to help their their mom. The old lady lives in the shoe, and then their landowner, the crooked man. They, all of these are like fairy tale on characters. Oh, but I, like oh, I remember one. this now. I would like about that one because the monkey in there was dressed as Mickey. And that's like oh. one of the early early films that Disney let you uh dress up characters from their own from their own from the world. Nowadays it, you can't do that. It's funny because uh uh I used to have uh I used to I, I think I told you the story already in like in passing that my great grandmother um I used, I used to like basically like stay with her a lot like she would babysit me and, and my aunt too but mainly it was my great grandmother because she was the one who was always home because my my aunt actually um she, fun fact my aunt was my kindergarten teacher i was gonna say she she had she had a job at school but this is like before i went to school yet and yeah. uh my great grandmother would always put that movie on for me and uh like i said i used to i've seen it countless times but i don't Same really remember it because i don't think i've i've literally not seen that movie since i was maybe five or six but i think i've seen it in pieces and i think they have remade it the laurel and hardy one is the original though i believe it's the original one before the the disney one the disney one has um dang what's those um famous couples they're like the singers it was before school was a thing <laughs> uh annette or annette at um oh i forgot uh, annette finicello and uh frankie uh yeah, I and and Frankie. me. Uh, there's an episode yeah. of Full House with them. Oh, okay. Yeah, there is. But yeah, uh, the, um, that's the Disney one. Is that was those two? It it's funny because even as a kid, even as a young kid, because every so often this would come up. I think my, I'm pretty sure my great grandmother, who was my aunt's mother, obviously. By the way, I just don't know if I should mention that. If I didn't mention that earlier, but uh, my aunt would even be like, that was her favorite Christmas movie. So I'm pretty sure she just liked the movie and would show it to like kids d- throughout the generations. And every time my aunt would mention it, like when I was old, as I was getting older to like more understand the title, I still swear to God, sorry to, to ruin that movie title for everyone if it hasn't already. It sounds like, if nothing else, a softcore porn title. And it just all. Oh, you don't think so, babes in toilet? The. By the way, babe, you know what babes? Ba- babes yeah, like, is like baby. A, it's a plural for babe for baby. Yeah, like, yeah. but no, to me, it's like babes in Toyland. It's uh, I imagine like turning on some yeah, Skinamax thingy, Toyland. and it's like girls in bikinis, like in in Santa's village, and they're like, "Hey, Miss Claus is at home today. Here are my titties," and that's what I imagine. And I'm, n- and by the way, this is not Manuel talking from today. This was like I I was like eight or ten year old manual thinking this like variations on that i'm sure i didn't say those words but even in my head i'm like is that a one of those movies kind of you know uh, yeah that's what i thought it was and i i uh, might be mistaken but I, I for sure it wasn't the Laurel harder one it was the newer one because that was on tv more when i was younger but yeah. um i think i even turned the channel to it one time thinking i would see some you know nudity i shouldn't be seeing and i was like oh this is just a movie. Yeah, a nice, friendly movie. I'm I know, it's like, here I am ruining, ruining what it was his memory, sorry. That Another, it, it's funny because I, I, I don't want to say I like this movie anymore. I don't want to say I like it uh, because of what, I just, of what I just said a few minutes ago. But I still have a soft spot, spot? spot, yeah, spot. For, the, for the first two Santa Claus movies. Um... And I think I've mentioned this, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this story before, but when I was in sixth grade in my uh, PE class, um, some of the PE teachers, like there was like two or three of them, brought us all in. By the way, I love that we were all watching this tiny TV. Well, it was big, but it wasn't like that big. They 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 wheeled in a TV and like a hundred kids had to watch this tiny TV. But anyways, they wheeled in a TV and the PE teacher was like, oh yeah, everyone, uh, today we're gonna, we're taking a little break from like, what the fuck we were doing, and we're all gonna watch a movie, it's a movie about, it's a true story about a, a historical figure maybe some of you know, and they put on the Santa Claus. Uh, <laughs> and it's specifically called the Santa Claus, in case you've never seen it before, because the premise is that, like, the Santa Claus, as in with the E, which is yes. like a legal clause, and um, uh, TLDR, Tim Allen, fucking monster that he is kills the original santa or kills the then current santa who they never refer to again by the way he is fucking dead um 
and becomes the new Santa. And that's the the plot of the movie. Uh, <clears throat> and I think we've talked about this in the past. What always blows my mind, and I'll never forget this, is that when he when he goes back to go see the elves, and fucking, I don't remember that guy's name, Bernard the Elf, I think is his character name. Yeah, yeah that's his name. But that dude, he's fucking great. He was in, a, he was in, Cat, no, he was in 10 Things I Hate About You. He's the guy with the dick on his face or whatever. Oh, but, uh... yeah, I know. <laughs> he's one um, of the Jewish friends from the Harold Kumar. Yeah, David yeah, Crumholz. He's in a lot of shit. He's in a lot of shit. I, I fucking love that guy. But anyways, he, he, he's great in that movie. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's his movie. And I'll just forget Tim Allen. Tim Allen's a murderer. <laughs> But what, what always blows my mind is that when he shows back up, nobody is all like, what happened to Joe? <laughs> Joe's been Santa for 50 years. Is, is he okay? Nobody cares. <laughs> Tim it Allen. happens every year or so. <laughs> you know what's funny about that is that I, I can't find that video. But I remember watching like a, 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 a literal conspiracy theory where the elves are literally in the background. And they, oh, and then they kill him. They push him or some shit. They they plan it to make him new Santa Claus, the Tim Allen. But I can't that... find the video. I literally saw a video where it was like a big old conspiracy. Like, like if you if you pause it, you could literally see one of the elves, one of the children <laughs> in the background. They're elves, and throughout the whole thing, you, you oh. and they plan it out. I can't that... find the video, but I remember seeing a video like that, and it was like a weird video. On, That's on creepy. But yeah, like they 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 sabotage it because supposedly he was an evil Santa, and he treated them like really bad. And then when they found out how he was kind of like somewhat of a jerk, but somewhat like cool, when he started turning, they they uh, planned it out for him. Because the it's funny you mention that because the pl- by the way, there's two sequels, and even in that first one, you see it. They seem to like the Tim Allen Santa. I don't know what the fuck his name was, but they they liked they they liked the Tim yeah. Allen Santa, because like the plot for the next two is that he's gonna be replaced for the second one. He needs to get a wife, or he'll not be Santa anymore. And the third one, Jack Frost takes over or some shit like that, which is a terrible movie. Um, but don't watch oh. the part three of that. Oh, but uh, um, but they care that <laughs> the elves are like, no, we need to help Santa. But when the other dude. <laughs> doesn't come back they don't even ask a question <laughs> they're not even like oh yeah sucks that he fell off the roof and tim allen's like how'd you know that um uh, <laughs> want some hot cocoa <laughs> or some it took shit. 300 years to master it no i was thinking about that too i'm like and i wonder how long he was santa like because <laughs> he was a while he was enslaving them for like the coca-cola days but anyways, oh man, I, I still love the first two. The second one um, has my, one of my, actually, I think it's my favorite Christmas song in terms of like the song um, ever. Uh, and it's called Naughty Naughty Christmas. And it's by a band called Danger Danger. They're an 80s band. And <laughs> this sounds so stupid, but I, this is true. Naughty Naughty Christmas is a Christmas version of Danger Danger's hit from the 80s called Naughty Naughty. And they just rewrote it with Christmas lyrics and put it on Santa Claus too. Ten years later, like, they were already long past A by this point. But they were one of those groups like Striper who kind of, like, stayed alive during Christmas shows. It's like, how does that work? You got a hairband that just, like, lives through Christmas shows. Um, Brian Setzer <laughs> does that too. That's that's the topic for another day. But Brian Setzer kind of just... Uh, from the Stray Cats, speaking of 80s people who stay alive during Christmas bullshit. Um, Twisted Sister, fucking, they, they, there was, anyways, anyways, I'm getting off topic. <laughs> getting off topic. What's another one, Weston? Let's move on to some other movies. Uh, what's a good one? It's kind of hard because it's like, I'm usually traditional on the Christmas movies. Oh, um, I, everyone's favorite is the Muppet Christmas Carol. Hands yes. down. Yes. No one can say they don't like it. That's oh, shit. The, number one. That's shit. Number Sorry. One you you pulled out my ear. That's a traditional movie you need to watch every year at Christmas time. That's Rest a good one. Yes. That's a good one. Um, I have not seen it in several years, unfortunately. It's but on that's Disney+. Plus. Yeah, I was going to say. I think I saw that it's on Disney Plus recently. It's a Muppet special. Of, of course it is. Oh, well, I don't know if Muppets are Disney. Yes, That's they are. Stupid to say, but I, I don't know. Yeah, they bought them off like ten years ago, twenty years. But ago. But then again, I, like I'm pretty sure I've gone to like a Muppet show at Disneyland or California Adventure, some bullshit. I can't yeah, remember which one, but but anyway, 
I love that movie. I should go watch it. Like, I haven't seen that in forever. I also like the Mickey Christmas Carol, which I don't remember. When I was a kid, I went to go see some movie. It might have been Little Mermaid. I don't know what the fuck it was. It was some bigger budget full length movie. And then they showed. No, wait, I'm thinking about something else entirely. Never mind. Never mind. That didn't happen because I was. Don't they did moment. do that, but the but but the the Mickey's movie they showed was a, a different Mickey special. But I still like the Mickey Christmas Carol. That was, was the first version. Brain? Yeah, then they showed something else, but I, I I still might be right. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw this in theaters, but it wasn't the main show. Like it was, they just played it before an actual movie, which they, they used to do that a lot back then. I don't think they do it anymore. Even before. No, that was very rare back in the day. Well, even before the Pokemon movie, they which they showed that Pikachu's vacation bullshit, which no yeah. one remembers. I, I mentioned I remember that. I'm that. Like, yeah, I'm like that's vacation recent. Where I wanna be. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. but uh, the the Mickey Christmas Carol I really liked. I actually love Christmas Carol. I used to I used to like um, I love the holidays. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned that. I'm I'm really cheesy when it comes to that. I like a lot of the cheesy stuff. Even though I mentioned like. Um, I'll be home for Christmas or whatever. I do like the classics. I used to love going to Knott's Berry Farm, which they call Knott's Berry Farm during holidays, by the way. Mm-hmm. I used to like going to Knott's Berry Farm. Uh, I haven't gone cause, since the pandemic, mainly because I let my uh, season pass expire. I think I can get it renewed now, though. And I let you go in December anyway. But I used yeah. to like going because you could see the Christmas Carol, the play version, um, there. And I used to always I used to like going there and watching it. And uh, I must, I've seen that like so many times, like the, the little play version of Christmas Carol they put on. Um, it's, a good, it's a good story. And I like a lot of good versions of it. Speaking of which, a really good version of a Christmas Carol, which I don't think, I, I'm sure it's known, but I don't think it gets talked about as much anymore, is Scrooged. Um, Bill Murray one? Yeah, the Bill Murray one, where he's like a exe- like a, an exec in the, a TV exec in the 80s or some shit like that. And yeah. like, it's it, it, it's the same story and like one of the ghosts is a taxi driver and so on i can't remember which one that was it's a great movie i loved it there's also this opening scene where this dude um i, I think it's like they're talking about like the horrors of like modern society in like the 80s or whatever and it's like oh drive-by shootings and it's like these two cars driving and this dude leans out with a shotgun and shoots the people in the other car and it just <laughs> takes you yeah exactly and by the way i'm not over describing this they show this it feels like it's from another movie and it's like why is this in this movie <laughs> but uh because it's the 80s that's horse. <laughs> Yeah, it's like fucking like the the shit you like. I'm sure that movie was still rated PG-13. That I mean, they didn't show the guys that can't. It wasn't like gory, but it was still like this dude just leans out with a shotgun like this, like out of his car, and um, yeah, it was just oh, and this isn't like gang violence. It's just like these two guys on the road. They're like random people, like you know, random yuppies driving driving around going to shoot each other in the, on the road ro- road rage, if you will. Yeah, but that's road a good rage caused that. <laughs> but that's a good one. Uh, that's that's a good uh, version of Christmas Carol. I also like the older one. Gosh, who the fuck was in it? There was one. I think I want to say it's like the seventies. They would always show it on Disney Channel back in the day. Oh yeah, oh. Um, Albert Finnis is his name. Yes, yes. That that's, that's the one, one of my favorites. Oh. And that, the black was, and white one. Yeah, so those are ones I used to. Um, I used to have the the other one, not the black and white one, on DVD. Um, I think it was bootleg DVD, but I had that on DVD until recently. Well. That I didn't, I didn't throw away. I think it just got lost. But yeah, until recently, like I just don't have that one. A uh, fun story. This is a little non sequitur, but it is related. There was one Christmas where uh, I wanted to buy the the Santa Claus movie on DVD, and this was a long time ago because I remember my my then girlfriend bought me a Wii, so this is dated perfectly how long ago this was. And I wanted to buy the Christmas Santa Claus one and two so we could watch them together like over the holidays. So I ordered it from Amazon, and. Uh, the movie shows up. I think it was a combo pack for the two movies, by the way. It shows up. And I'm like, oh, look, it's here. Yay, we can watch the Santa Claus tonight. And then the next day, I get like 10 packages. And they're all the Santa Claus combo pack or whatever again. <laughs> you multi bought <laughs> No, uh, Amazon just like hiccuped and sent me a ton of them. And um, I actually, I remember, I do, I do remember I messaged Amazon because I was afraid I was going to charge for them. And I messaged Amazon. I'm like, I have all these DVDs. And I'm like, can, like, can I just send them all back in one thing? They're like, I have to send them back individually. And I'm like, I didn't order these though. And there is an option on Amazon's thingy where I didn't order it. And it's supposed to just like do all the work for you. But they didn't have that back then. So customer service was so confused. They're like, just keep them all. So I had like 10 copies. Oh, and they also sent me the, they kept sending me a Vita memory card, which were valuable. So I was so excited by that too. But um, 
I think I just took them all to like Amoeba and sold all the fucking Santa Claus ones. <laughs> but yeah, that that's my Santa Claus story. And I think that DVD is also lost, unfortunately, or I guess fortunately, because fuck Tim Allen. But uh, but yeah, I mean, so if another... you want to watch a movie, you can watch it on Tubi. Yeah, um, I, I'm sure it's not. Another thing I liked about that first Santa Claus movie is there's a scene one of my favorite scenes in a Christmas movie where they um uh, where obviously oh dad doesn't know how to do christmas or food so he burns a turkey or whatever so they're like let's go to denny's and denny's is out of everything yes he's like he's like like we are we're out of chocolate milk he's like plain milk is fine oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god charlie's such a little bitch in that movie and he's even oh. a bigger bitch in the second one because the when he tries to find a wife in the santa claus too oh he's being all, he's being all prince. emo no, because he gets prince. mad at him because because he, he's supposed to be on his side, but he's like, "You're you're acting up," and the principal and you know, I'm in love with the principal. And he's like, "Dad, why you gotta fall in love with the principal? I thought you supposed to love me and shit." And I'm like, "Fuck, man!" Shut shit. Up. <laughs> Smack! Don't 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 don't. We don't support it. We gotta stop making these abuse jokes. But um... yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is... <laughs> I just remember going back to the Married with Children thing. There was always the running joke of Married with Children. Well, it was always about him, like a memory that he had to himself, not like hitting his own kids. He was always saying, it's like, if I ever talked back to my dad, wham, five across the eye. Remember that line? He would say that a lot if you ever watch Married with Children. (laughs) Like somebody would do it to him. I think it was saying his dad would or whoever. But yeah, five across the eye. I always think about that. And I'm just like, gotta stop making that joke. But um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but it, the, that song I mentioned earlier, the naughty, naughty, danger, danger bullshit, you know, double, double, whatever, whatever. Um, yeah. It was during the scene. They play that song. In, if you ever watch Santa Claus 2, when he's like breaking into like the gym, which I think is what like sets up the whole plot of the movie, because that's when he gets caught. and the, they, call, they call the dad and whatever. By the way, that <laughs> spoiler alert, by the mild spoiler alert, because obviously the whole plot of that movie is he's going to marry her. You don't fucking need to watch the Christmas, you know, thing to know that. But uh <laughs> The whole the whole thing is he needs to find a Mrs. Claus. That's the whole point of it. And he finds the principal and they get married or whatever, I guess. But in the credit sequence, you see like them dancing to whatever the fuck Christmas song they have in the credit sequence. But she turns into Mrs. Claus. And what I mean is I wasn't expecting that. I did not know that was to be part of the 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 whole thing and I'm like is she okay with this? She turns into an old lady <laughs> into like um a larger old lady, like a traditional Mrs. Claus. But if you see her before, it's like she's this pro- probably much younger than Tim Allen, like blonde, like good looking woman. And suddenly she has this old, like gray hair, you know, like I'm like, is she fine with this? Is she, is she good? Did she know that was going to happen? Because I did it. I didn't know that was part of it. I didn't know she I was going to. I don't think both of them knew about it. He, like I said, he was just trying to get a wife because, uh, and, and because of the first contract, he had to be Santa Claus. In the second, uh, Santa Claus. The contract in the back says he needs to have a married. Oh, that's some bullshit. That yeah, would, so, that, so that I was like, contract. really? A, a second contract behind me is like, oh, I need to be married in order to keep my powers. It's like, now you say funny. something. That um, that was also the last movie to feature Bernard. Um, he's not in part three. I forgot. I forgot what you said. His name was something. Um, David. That Krimmel. actor. That David Kermel. Yeah, he's not in part three. Thank God, because that movie's terrible. Martin Short is terrible in that one but it's but, because yeah, that it's because that little kids uh the spencer razin whatever the, his name is oh yeah the one that created the evil santa claus yeah robot do, do, do you do you remember that one elf girl the one who like makes the hot cocoa and i forgot what i forgot TLDR, this is really creepy. Well, it's, it's only creepy if you want it to be creepy. This is really weird scene in the first one. It reminds me of very anime bullshit. Where like he's like, Oh, this is really good hot cocoa. And the little girl kind of takes it as she as he's flirting or whatever. It's like, oh yeah, something about her husband. She's like, like husband, how old are you? She's like 10,000 years old or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> and she's like, this little girl. It's like, oh my god. No, yeah, she was she was seeing somebody in like in Oh, she sees someone in rapping. I think it was. That was the yeah, line. Yeah, it was rapping. <laughs> I've seen someone in rapping. That's what that was the line. But yeah, it's like, how old are you? It's like I'm like three thousand years old or ten thousand, whatever. Some it's thousands. But anyways, anyways, I think he still love those movies. Uh, if I, if I t- someone should remake those. I'm all against remakes, but remake that one. Just I don't I can stop seeing. But don't, don't change it. Just just fucking suit, just like, digitally edit out <laughs> Tim Allen and put yeah, someone else in his place. 
get George Lucas on this. Give him a job. Like, George, we got the best job for you ever. I know you love doing this. Just take him out the movie. <laughs> fucking put no. Hated Christian. I don't fucking care. <laughs> put someone in there. Maybe not Hated Christian. Yeah, maybe not Hated uh, Christian. No, put Peter Jackson in so you could put a, a, a L for a fucking a <laughs> Hobbit fucking, in. I was gonna say, he fucking looks like he could be. He could like play a Santa Claus, and that's not a fat. Joke, first of all, I mean, he has a beard and everything. He could, like yeah. he's gonna turn into Santa Claus one day, and he has like the same kind of hair. Any maybe the hair, and I think he has glasses too. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, anyways, um, what else is there? Um, there, there's this movie. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it. It's actually, it's actually I think there's more than one called Santa Baby, and what's her name? Um. Okay, that sounds familiar. I know what you're talking about. Damn it. Hold on, I need to look up her name real fast because that's the. Uh, she she has that book where she's like on the toilet on the cover. It was famous if you knew her. Hold on, Santa Baby movie. Oh, uh, Jenny McCarthy? There you go, Jenny McCarthy. She, yeah, she, she's crazy in that Jenny movie. McCarthy? Yeah, <laughs> she's a little less crazy in this one. But, no, she's um, crazy. Yeah, she. I think she's crazier these days. Uh, you know what? Is she anti vax these days too? Do I have to start stop watching? She was the original that was like anti vax. Yeah, and she's say, also like, one I, of those people with the conspiracy things as well. It just yeah, it just dawned on me. I'm like, I think she's like I don't think I know she's anti vax. I think I first heard anti vax stuff from her. Fun fact, from, like yeah, long her, before yeah. it was trendy. Like just, she made it trendy, I think. But yeah, fuck, George, you know what to do. But no, Santa baby. <laughs> Once again, I guess you put this in the guilty pleasures thingy because of this. Like, I fucking hate that the whole people outside of these movies. Um, oh, oh yeah, her uh, her dad is um, Santa, played by George. Yeah, yeah. her okay. dad is Santa, I've seen this and, one now. and it's like it's what I found weird. I remember watching it, thinking it was gonna be like because she has like a real like a quote unquote like real life. You know, she's working some job or whatever. And the whole plot is that I think the dad wants to retire, so he's like gonna bring her home to get her to do the job. And I wasn't expecting him to play it so like real. Like I thought it was gonna be that kind of movie where she finds out her dad is Santa, you know. Like, but yeah. no, it's she, she knew it all along. She grew up, she lived with the elves, and she just decided to move out, live her life, and now she went back. And it's typical bullshit. Like she the city life is ruining me, so she goes back to the small town, meets a small town boy. It, it is interesting because the genders are reversed. Usually, it's a guy to to a girl kind of thing. You know, it can be small, but yeah, it's a great movie. Um, I, I vaguely I guess, watched enough uh, Hallmark Christmas movies to tell you that now it happens a lot either way. Oh yeah, well, because when you get to a Hallmark movie, which it's funny because I love those, but even I'll admit they're cookie cutter plots. Um, not only are they cookie cutter plots, they're cookie cutter posters. Have you seen a Hallmark movie poster? They're so, they look like the kind of photos you get, like in a, in a picture frame, like when you buy the frame, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they look like a stock photo, but that's yeah. the, that's the way they're promoting their movie. It's like, that's like, you know, this random couple and it's, it's always a couple on the covers, you know, it's never like, a, well, sometimes they, 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 they spice it up a little, but it's never like a dog blocking over a tree and then like, ah. no, it's always like this couple kind of each other's arms ish with like a nice little scene in the background. It's like, Oh, this is, this is terrible. Get some originality. I, I fucking, um, last Christmas, <laughs> last Christmas, love that song. But last Christmas, um, I just, uh, I had the joy cause, um, of discovering a Christmas prince, which is now one of my favorite, uh, it's on Netflix, by the way. There's three of them now. They had one every year. And they might have continued that if it's not for the pandemic. I think the last one was in 2019, which is fine because the third one kind of got kind of eh. Um, but they're great movies. Very famously, when the first one came out, Netflix is on Twitter and they're like, they didn't say who it was, but they, they revealed that they saw the user data. Like somebody had watched the Christmas Prince every day since like Thanksgiving, and they 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 posted a screenshot of like the the data, but with no name attached. Like who like who hurt you or whatever? And everyone got pissed at Netflix because they were basically outing someone, even though it wasn't by name, which is kind of fucked up when you think about it. Um, but I fucking love that movie. It, it's it's great. You should go watch it. It's a new movie, so it's like Manuel isn't always boomer watching old shit. And as far as I know, no one's done any terrible things from that cast yet. <laughs> no one needs not to yet. be canceled. Yet. Not yet, like you said. Not yet. No one's come out like, I'm going to find out the fucking main guy was like fucking at the January 6th protest or some bullshit and just throw everything out of whack. But no, as far as I know, no one in that movie is problematic yet. And it's a, it's a good movie. And uh, 
they also have this um and this is weird to point out because me pointing out almost defeats the purpose in in the story one of the main characters is like disabled and it was so weird watching it because it was not a plot point and i know it sounds fucked up to say but like it was it, it was it, it was what's the word refreshing <laughs> it was refreshing to watch that and it's like oh the character's disabled but that's not going to be like i don't think they even refer to it you know like they they help her out in and out of things, but they're never like, "Oh, you're disabled. Do you need help? that's not a plot point? We should just overcome it or some bullshit, you know?" Yeah. N- nice thing. Nice thing. You don't see that. I don't think I've, the first time I've seen. It, I'm sure it's in a lot of other media, but I just want to throw that out there too as a little random plus. Also, the country in that movie is called Aldovia, and that was what started the whole argument, the discussion that we had a long time ago when we were talking about Moldova, Moldavia. Aldovia, and I forgot what the fuck the country is from Prince's Bride, the Prince's Diaries. Um, all those sound very similar, and they all sound very similar to a real life country called Moldovia or Moldova now, but yeah, Moldovia, which is like part of like well, part of it's part of Romania and then part of it's uh, independent. But yeah, it just um, one of those things. Yeah, <laughs> the other and... movies, Weston. Huh? Oh, sorry. Before we move on, and apparently. That is part of Netflix's Christmas cinematic universe. Oh, they have a cinematic universe. Yeah. Oh, well, I never like. Hold on. Uh, they they oh, don't like on. cross over with each other, but they take place in like the same world. Well, I had they seen people talking Aldovia. about this. Like they, they'll mention Aldovian st- I have. N- I just heard about it on Twitter. Okay. Oh, I, I, by the way, I googled it, and the first thing is an article from a couple weeks ago. Actually, there's a lot of articles. They're all new too, but there's one how Netflix Christmas movies connect in a cinematic universe, and it's a Newsweek thingy. Um, I'm actually opening it right now. Ah, paywall. Hold on, <laughs> let me just <laughs> let me click that away. But um, oh, I did not know the Princess Switch was a fu- uh, fucking one of those movies. I, 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 oh, a night before Christmas. I've seen that one too. I don't like that one though. The night before Christmas. That's the one where the night gets transported or whatever. Um, uh. Thanks to Warren. Shout out to Warren, by the way, for letting me uh, piggyback on his Netflix. That's actually how I saw all those movies last year. Um, and Damn, I, I don't. Yeah, at some he let me borrow it uh, around October ish because there was this um, there was this uh, movie he wanted me to see. He's like, "Oh, you should go watch it." Like, oh, I don't have Netflix right now. And he's because at the time I think I was waiting to see if there would be a Black Friday deal or some shit like that down the road. He's like, nah, you could just use mine. Here's here's the password. So I logged in, and just just cut to the, cut to the chase. I never logged out, <laughs> and, and that was what. <laughs> and and that was how I saw. Like, uh, I remember, I remember, I'll never forget this. Around Christmas time, because I had only watched the movie he's told me to watch, and I felt like I was gonna, I was kind of abusing the the privilege. But like after Thanksgiving, I was like, I want to watch a Christmas movie, but there was like nothing good that was available through Amazon Prime or anything I really wanted to watch. And I'm like, what, what's on Netflix? <laughs> and I think that was how it all started. It was like a, me actually using it, you know, regularly and not not just uh that that was when the pretense like faded. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just I'm just piggy, I'm just stealing, not stealing, um, ab- abusing. I don't know what the word is. Yeah. But anyways, anyways, you're mucho. <laughs> Taking advantage. Taking advantage. <laughs> Anyway, I'm a moocher. Anyway, I got him. I got him a badge for LA though, so whatever. It, it, it's equal. Kind of. That's how that works, right? <laughs> for you, I hey. guess. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, how much is a leeching. badge? The badge would have been sixty dollars. So yeah. So that's like five Le- months. Of is a... Netflix. Yeah. I gotta get him many more badges. I can keep stealing his Netflix. But yeah, Christmas night is the one where they go back and well, the night goes. It's like a kid, a kid in King Arthur's court, kinda, but like the reverse. Um, uh, hmm. and and Christmas. Uh, by the way, have you ever read that book? That book's wild. It, the 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 kid eventually brings modern war to King Arthur. No you one mean, ever translates that. Uh, huh? You mean a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court where he's a uh, that's full what grown adult? Is. Yeah. By the way, yeah, the kid is the movie version I saw when I was a kid, and I meant the Kinetic Kinetic Ginky. But yeah, in that one, he is a full grown adult, and he brings them modern. He brings them like knowledge of how to make modern weaponry. I forget what the plot point was, how he knew this, and TLDR already fucked up the society. No one ever translates that part. They they just keep the fun part where it's like ah, wacky things ensue because it's like culture shock. They ride into anyway, war on bicycles. Uh... What's some of your favorite Christmas movies? Fun gum. I see you in the chat there calling me a leech. <laughs> which i am hey leeches 
don't don't insult leeches by comparing them to manual. Leeches can be helpful. <laughs> I remember they I have to be so medical dead. applications. This, medical this purposes. Is, this is mildly off. This is very off topic, but I'll, I'll be quick about this. There's um, because we're doing yeah, pretty good quick lately. about it, right? <laughs> there's this movie. Fuck, is, is this Stand by Me? That used to make me deathly afraid of leeches because there's a scene where they all go swimming and then like um they realize there's leeches in the water. I think it's Stand by Me, right? And then like they all start pulling them off of each other. And there's a part where like the, the one of the kids realizes there's leech like in on his crotch, like in his underwear. Remember that? And he pulls it off and it's like blood and all this other shit and he like passes out made me afraid of leeches yes it is um, me. <laughs> it made me afraid of leeches anyways le- i used to always be so scared that if i ever went to any kind of body of water like a leech would get me or something or like a shark I used to be scared, like you know damn nature you scary but damn water you scary <laughs> <laughs> and that's why manual never shower i'm just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> anyway. i can smell you from here <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. What are the Christmas movies? I, I think I think we've gone to some. We didn't mention the Charlie Brown Christmas one. I was gonna say, what about the cute puppet Christmas? The what puppet? Cute puppets. Cute puppets. What like cute Avenue puppets? Q or? No, the fr- the Rankin Bass. Oh, cute. Oh, okay, They're okay. Puppets. Cute okay. puppets. The Rankin okay. Bass. Um, fun specials. fact. Fun fact. Those have a cinematic universe that are. It's actually pretty wild. Yes, and... they do. What not just me? Christmas alone, other holidays oh, yeah. as well. Exactly. Because there's a bunny, Easter bunny one, I think, where like that really crosses over too. It's kind of the plot to it's kind of like an earlier version of Santa Claus 3, but don't watch that. Watch these movies instead. But um what pisses me off is have you ever watched Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer? Rudolph grows up in that movie. And they yeah. never, ever, 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 ever give you adult Rudolph again. It's always baby Rudolph. Even though that's I not it was really a teenager Rudolph. Oh, yeah, it's Teenager Rudolph, but you know, like, not... It's like as if you play Ocarina of Time and they always give you Kid Link from then on. I know it's like Teenager, but yeah. They never give you a... They never give you Adult Link again. It's like, fuck you, Nintendo. Fuck you, Rick. No, it's kidding. Making Bass is great. Um, The fucking... Is it a Abominable Snowman? That shit used yep. to scare me because, um... Mind you, I saw this when I was really young. The first I've seen them many times. Unlike some other shit I saw when I was really young, I kept seeing these as time went on. I think I even saw them a couple years ago, like very recently, or some of them, because I had a uh, a friend of mine had a DVD pack and we watched them one night. But um, but the abominable snowman from the Rankin Bass uh, specials, it's typical, you know, big white snowman creature. But it reminded me so much of the the Wampa. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that's what it's a yeah. the, the Wampa. It reminded me so much of the Wampa from, from Empire Strikes Back. It just Same. Is, it, 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 if you've never seen Empire Strikes Back, that's the thing that like uh, gets Luke and like fucks him up, and then Luke cuts, cuts off his arm and everything like that. He goes like, and then his arm goes flying or whatever. Um, it used to scare the shit out of me, and I used to always think, and I think he, my, my asshole brother would even be like, oh, look, the Wampa's going to eat him. This is what, where he went after. <laughs> this is, this is, after these movies, he went to Hoth, and that's... And then he went to go fuck up Luke's bullshit. I'm gonna see. They're still um they still air Grandpa got run over. Grandma. Oh Grandma, grandma got, got run over by a reindeer. Yeah, I don't know why I read grandma. Songs. Okay, I love the song. And okay, I don't like the original song, but like there have been some good covers of it. Like Gilby Clark from Guns N' Roses had a cover of it on a metal album that I really like. Um, and there's some others that I can't remember off the top of my head, but that movie, I think it's a cartoon, and I don't know yeah. about the same one, Fun Gum. It's fucking bad. <laughs> yeah, um, that's like that's like Cartoon Network bad. No, yeah. but it's it's really really bad because like exactly. I think the that, plot they point, created it. Yeah, I think the plot point even like skips a year, so like Grandma dies, and then like well, she's died, you know. Yeah, they they but, think she's dead. There's like a murder trial or something. Yeah, it's like what? What is this? Who wrote this? Uh, there are ways that you can adapt a song to a full-length movie. Look at Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, for example. Frosty the Snowman. But like, Grandma got run over by a reindeer was not one of them. Also, Santa like, Claus is coming to town. That's another one. <laughs> um, even before metal people started making like ominous versions of that song, I always thought that song sounded a little creepy. Like, even before it became trendy to point out, like, oh, he knows you're sleepy, he knows when you're awake. I thought that was a really, like, that sounded very threatening to me, even as a small child, like, understanding it like that. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? Who's this Santa Claus? Should I be scared? Do I need to, like, sleep with a stick under my bed or something? 
Yeah, sleep with the Jesus cross since it's the same time. <laughs> it's the same time. Oh my god. But yeah, Grandma got run over by reindeer is terrible. I have, thank God I have not seen that since I was a kid. Um, I remember like my mom used to overplay that song too. Like the the original ones by like Elmo and Patsy, if I'm not mistaken. And the only reason I know that is because I still have, or I think I like I physically still own the record, the little forty five that my mom used to play a lot when we were when I was a kid and fucking hated that song. <laughs> Even though yeah, I like other still, versions, I still there. own the Alvin and Chipmunk one. Oh, is wait? Did Alvin and Chipmunks ever do a Christmas movie? I know that sounds like a stupid thing to say because I assume they did, but they I've did never pick, seen uh, it. They did a TV special from like I want to see the sixties or seventies. Yeah, I must have never had, seen when it when they had a TV show back then. Because I only I know the song obviously, which by the way is called a Chipmunk song, and that blew my mind when I found out it's called that because I'm um, yep. like, it's not called Chipmunk Christmas or whatever the you know or. Christmas don't be late. It's called the Chipmunk song. And it's like, imagine like them being that defined by Christmas. But um by the way, the song, if you don't know, it's the one where it's like, um me, I wanna train that loop or something like that. Like I I wanna train that loops the loop. Me, I wanna nope. hula hoop. Or some shit like that. I don't know the lyric. It's funny because we sung this on a DTL once, like really, really fucking drunk, like like me, Callie, and like what's it, uh, Warren, and I forgot who else was on that one. We all sung that song really fucking wasted. And Fun Gum was there because I remember Fun Gum while we were singing it, he redeemed sing mode, <laughs> and I was just like, ah, oh, that... <laughs> it was like, might as well, <laughs> like we're already singing, but yeah, yeah. it's uh, the reason I mentioned that because I, I don't remember, the, I don't remember ever seeing a Christmas special, but I always knew that song. I had that album, I were, it wasn't an album similar to what I said about the Pac Man, it was a record in a book. And I think they just had that and like something else on the other side. I don't know what the fuck was on there, but um, but yeah. <laughs> what about the Star Wars holiday special, guys? Isn't that the best thing ever? But why do you yeah, think it's never been shown again? It, you just can't top it. I mean, you can YouTube it. Have you seen the Lego one? I've never seen it, but I keep seeing the ads for it on D- Disney Plus. By the way, shout out to Warren again because I'm I'm on Warren's Disney Plus. But uh, <laughs> just continue. Not everyone's that fucking. Uh, um, I do have my own services. I want to say like the Amazon Prime is mine, and I think I do have my own Paramount Plus, which I think I have given to Warren before in the past. Um, I don't think he did anything on there, though, so, unless you want to watch iCarly or something Nickelodeon, but uh, nothing's really on there. No. Uh, but anyways, um, Charlie the, Brown. The, oh, the Charlie Brown. Yeah, the Star Wars Holiday Special is what like bullshit. But the Charlie Brown one, I love it. But I haven't seen the movie version or whatever. I don't know if it's feature length or whatever. I have not seen that version in ages. They kind of adapt part of it to Snoopy on Ice. And I've fucking seen Snoopy on Ice like 50 times. So, yeah. Um, I, I will say this. I will say this. Similar to like how I mentioned before that I love Jesus Christ Superstar, the musical, as a piece of media not for religious purposes. I love, 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 love Christmas, Christmas music, Christmas season, Christmas everything, even Christmas songs that have uh, reference to things that, you know, religious, but I don't like it for the religious reasons. And part of the, part of my little, eh, even as a kid, watching the Charlie Brown one, even watch Sleepy Night, because so they recreate that scene, is the kind of preachiness it has. Um, when Linus? I forget I his name. Is. Yeah, You're right, Linus. Linus had, Linus has a speech about like what Christmas is really about, and um, I don't want to knock anyone's thing if that's your thing. I I, I I just found that a little a little too preachy. Even like once again, even as a kid, because as a kid I was always that kid, and I'm pretty sure we all were. Like I didn't want to go to church. I'm like, and that was because I didn't you know any religious reason. I just didn't want to go to church. You know, I don't um, want to go to church either. Fuck a Joel witness. Shit. Yeah, so I was just like I was. I was like, oh my god, I don't want to go. And like, having to watch, be home, my, it's Christmas, one of my favorite holidays, and it's like, oh, Linus is going to sit here and preach at me for, for about five minutes. <laughs> okay, I guess we're doing this. But basically, this is, if you've never seen it, by the way, which, congratulations for being born yesterday, but if you've never seen it, by the way, um, there's the whole thing where they get that tree, uh, <laughs> And the trees, like, because it's the last tree that they, that they can get, the Charlie Brown gets, because I guess they're all like bought or whatever. Is that what the plot point that was? And the trees, like, this mangled 
branch with like two sticks or whatever. And they try to decorate it and they put like an ornament on it and it just like tips over. And there's a scene. It's like the big scene, obviously, when they, they decide like, oh, we're going to all come together and fix the tree. And I'm like, what did they do? Did they just put a new tree there? Because that tree that they show when they all fix it is not the original tree. Because <laughs> like that tree, when they show you know the part I'm talking about, the tree suddenly has leaves, not leaves, but like, what do you call the fur things? But yeah, it has like needles, tinsels and all that stuff. Yeah, the, the, the tree's alive again. <laughs> and yeah, I'm they, like, no, they... no, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, they pit, they pump pit this right uh, his tree, man. <laughs> Decorated that... with, the, with the, everything. It's either that uh, or an I'll aluminum admit... Christmas tree manual. Exactly. I was gonna say, like, I I I feel like when like what's the, what's the blonde little girl's name? I feel like when she went to go like up Sally? there, huh? Was it Sally? Yeah, Sally. I feel like when Sally went up there, she was like, she had like. Uh, un- under her skirt had like stuck like uh, I don't mean like that by the way but under her skirt she had stuck like a fake tree and when she went forward she replaced the dead tree with like a plastic one she bought at Kmart or some shit because I'm like there's no way that that's the same tree you, uh, uh, yeah can we talk about but... it's the same tree <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle it's I know it's it, 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 it uh, anyways but yeah there's a scene where Linus basically uh tells the whole Jesus uh, birth story, like the Bethlehem thing, the you know, three wise men. It goes on and on, which I'll admit is a good telling of it. It's very concise. It's like, it, it, I, I like watching it in Christmas on Snoopy on Ice because you get a good, uh, um, usually somebody skating in the background. So I'm like, oh, watch the skater person, like, you know, do their thing while this is happening. Uh, but yeah, I'm just a little, eh, eh, that's my one gripe on that. Um, I, I I remember liking it, but I haven't seen it in many years. I definitely have seen the Thanksgiving one or the Halloween one more recently, but there's a Garfield Christmas special, which um I used to like a lot when I was younger. Which I have not seen in a while though. I just saw that um, one the other day. Really? Um was it Pluto TV? There's a Garfield and Friends channel. And oh. they show the Hall- they show the, the, the Halloween one, they show the Thanksgiving one, and they show the Christmas one. Is Pluto TV the free one? Yes. Because um, I remember Janet was talking about that on... Um, I think she was even talking about Garfield and Friends, fun fact. I don't know if we were alive when she mentioned that, or that which is a conversation her and I had. But, uh... Sorry, I'm going to drop in watch free. Uh, sorry, I'm, now I'm on Pluto TV. Anyways, um... What else is there? Oh, um, in the Charlie Brown one, there's actually another Christmas special. It's called It's Christmas Time Again, Charlie Brown. And the gas station shell... They sold a video cassette of it. That's how I got. Yes. That's how. I, that's how I got the Charlie Brown Christmas, and I had got another Charlie Brown special because the yes. gas shell station was selling them some of the VHSs. I forgot about that. I remember that. I remember that exact same thing. Uh, man, it's a wild time. Like <laughs> you can get these specifically yeah. from Shell, but I, I remember that. I remember. Uh, <laughs> this is off topic. I remember getting a lot of our old VHSs from from places i remember getting so many from mcdonald's remember they would give away movies this is mad off topic but yeah i used to get i got the i got the the indiana jones trilogy from mcdonald's that they were when like they were selling them like if you got like a oh, if you got I, a, I had those too <laughs> yeah if you got a certain meal you get the movie for like four dollars or some shit like that and yeah yep. or maybe free i don't know what the, what the deal was i have no you, you got it for a price yeah i think you had to pay for it still but it was cheap it was cheaper than yeah, was you cheap. know it was cheaper than than buying it for like twenty bucks and like nineteen ninety dollars, which would probably be like fifty bucks. Not even joking. But anyways, uh, what are the Christmas stuff before we wrap it up? I feel like there's something we didn't talk about. Oh, we didn't talk about Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, we didn't talk about a bunch of the big movies. I was going to bring that up. We didn't. Talk, I know. Which, we, what's we another one? No, Elf. speak. Uh, I don't I like. I fucking Elf. hate Elf. Fuck I Elf. Thank Elf. you. Oh Elf my is God. a man child movie. That's they, all oh, it is. It's a man child movie. Thank you. I, I can't stand Elf. Um, I do I like. Watch it. I'm not gonna lie. This is a. This is not in the same mindset, but it reminded me of this for some reason. I do like Bad Santa. Uh, and I do know. So, and I do know it that movie has. Moments, but, eh. And I do know there's some some parts of it that are very cringe, especially today. But um, I have a soft spot for, soft spot for it because they filmed it at um, the mall I live by, which is the Lama Mall. The mall I mentioned in the past that like is one of the biggest malls. It's only half the size of the Mall of America, and to me that yeah. mall just feels like whatever. And I'm like, and I'm like, 
It's like the Mall of America can't be that big. Anyways, um, uh, they filmed it there because they were remodeling the mall, and then they filmed part of it there. And I'm like, oh shit! So it's it's like when you watch that movie, when they're in the mall, you can especially when they're in the food court, you could see parts of the mall that I grew up with. Um, mm-hmm. and actually, fun fact, I didn't live by it then. I I used to have family that lived by it, so I would just when I visit them, I go to that mall. That was the mall I went to for Christmas. That was the mall we did our Santa photos at. Fun fact, when I was a kid, um. And I think they even show the place that we did the Santa photos at, but they were remodeling it, so it doesn't look that it doesn't look like that anymore. But it looked like it then, and um, it's kind of nostalgic for that. The movie's weird, and uh, it's aged pretty. I haven't seen it in like three or four years, so I'm, I remember even watching it like in 2015 or 2016. I was like, "Ooh, this is aged badly." So yeah. I'm sure it's aged even worse now. Oh yeah, Manuel, um, uh, to correct you, the Del Alamo huh? Mall is the sixth largest in America. Oh. <laughs> How much? What's the size comparison to the to the Mall of America? Was I right about that at least? Uh, so, I'm anyways, looking, uh, yeah. Well, he's well. We're figuring roughly, out that. Let's, see, it, see, it's I was a little less, that. but it's about half the size. That's what I'm saying. Oh. And the Mall of America oh. has an amusement park also, and I think, and according to Molly, that's half the mall. So basically, Delamo Mall is the size of the Mall of America, just not with an amusement park in the middle. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, what other shit before we wrap up? We missed a lot of things. Okay. What else do we uh, miss? A Christmas story? Oh, okay. <laughs> I've watched it too many times and I got annoyed with that. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. If, if um, I, I've, I've managed to bring this into like every holiday special we've done like on UPC this year. And it was funny because this is something I said about uh, candy last year when we did the candy tier list on the Halloween one. But can anything be so iconic but yet so boring? <laughs> Like, um, I think it's that movie, like Fragile. There's all these things that I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, there's a lot of like very like nostalgic things to it, but I don't know. I I just uh, you'll shoot your eye out, kid, and all you know all that bullshit. Um, (sighs) the only reason why I I don't really hate it, it's just that TBS back in the day will show that twenty four hours. Yeah, Yeah. no, they still do. They still, yeah, they still do. Yeah, but it's like. I watch this too many times. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm done with it. It's a good movie to watch if you're a kid with family, but uh, it's just a one-time kind of movie, in my opinion. Yeah, and like, I don't know. Like you said, like back in the day, and it's funny because like I remember watching a documentary on the movie. I think it was actually one of those like the movies that made us, but like the Christmas movies that made us, maybe on Netflix, on Warren's Netflix. Thank you very much, Warren. But um, <laughs> Warren, change the password. I, I think I was watching one. Of, I think it was that documentary about the Christmas story, and they mentioned it too. Like that movie didn't do too well. It got a lot of its life in like TV plays, TV air uh, replays, and TV when VHS I, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, when I was younger, they would show it on TV. Like when I was really young, I saw it for the first time. They would show it on TV. I'd watch it. I'm like, that's a good movie. I can't wait to see that again next year. And then TBS has to do shit. You, you know me and the cheese jokes, uh, JD? That, yes. That's TBS and the Christmas story. Because TBS yep. is like, oh, you like this? How about we show it all fucking day? <laughs> well, I mean, it's Christmas Day. How many people are looking for like new content on TV? They might as well just air I mean, something that gets some viewings. But I'm sure, I'm sure Ted Turner owns more than that fucking movie. Go show 12 other Christmas movies. I don't know. Go, go or just show uh, go dip into his favorites and play the Shawshank Redemption again. <laughs> yes, on Christmas. Isn't there a Christmas <laughs> scene in that movie though? I have. I um, don't remember. I, I'm gonna assume Probably. there is because the movie takes place over like <laughs> decades. I'm gonna assume there's one Christmas scene in that movie. It's funny because um, I wanted to talk about this. It was in my early version of the notes for this whole thing. Was talking about Christmas movies that aren't Christmas movies. And everyone knows the Die Hard one. There's actually, like, I have this nice meme I like sharing where it's all like, look how cool I am because I said Die Hard is my favorite Christmas movie, you know. Um, But um, that was funny to say, like, literally when I was a kid, because people were saying this, like, ages ago. But, like, now that the internet's got a hold of it and now that, like, the fucking, uh, the boomer fucking sharing their uh, minion memes, people have gotten a hold of it. Now it's dead. But, um, But there's a lot of them like that. Uh, Die Hard 2 is also a Christmas movie. Nobody talks about that. Um, Batman fucking, Returns is a Christmas Batman movie. Batman Returns, yes, because that's uh, that it literally takes place like a day or two before Christmas. 
that feels very Christmassy. Also, I don't. I remember mentioning this, and I have not. I, I, one of these days, I need to watch this movie again because I, I fucking loved it as a kid, but I have not seen it since I was a kid. I've even seen like a musical version of it recently. Like I even saw a parody and a real musical version of it. Edward Scissorhands is that a Christmas movie? I could have sworn there's a Christmas like takes place in Christmas, right? No, yeah, he, it's, it's, he's, he's cutting. It's he's making it Christmas snow. <laughs> he's making it. It's it's chopping up an ice block and it's snowing. Renona Ryder is doing this, and like yeah, it's twirling, snowing, twirling, twirling. Twirl- <laughs> By the way, now that I've always wanted to mention this, because uh, I, I I feel like we'll never bring up Edward Scissorhands again. And the opening of that movie, by the way, rest in peace, Richard Price. I think that was his last. Richard Price, that's his name. Richard that, Price, uh, yeah, you're right. Sorry, I can't remember if that was his first name. Um, rest yeah, in peace, Richard yeah, Price. Yeah. Uh, that was his last movie, if I'm not mistaken. He passed away before it was released. And it's even sadder when you watch it because he dies at the opening of that movie. Spoiler alert, that's the first few minutes though. But in that opening scene, um, the whole plot point is he makes this guy, he makes a man, like very Frankenstein-ish makes a man. We don't know how, but he makes a man. And the man has scissors for hands. And for a gift, I think it's even a Christmas gift. For a Christmas gift, he's going to give him a set of hands that he made to complete his creation. And right when he's going to give him the hands, he dies. And yeah, as he's dying, yeah, that the, the scene's really sad. And as he's dying, he, the hands he created fall onto the scissors and get yeah, all, be... like, sliced up. Which is, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I guess he can't put it, even put them on himself. But, <laughs> sorry, to have, this is the third time I brought this up this episode. I saw that movie, more or less when it came out on VHS, so about a year after whatever it released. I saw it, like, immediately on VHS. I'll never forget, like... My aunt, different aunt than, the, than like the one who showed me in Turnland. My aunt um, brought us all over to her house to go watch that movie for Christmas. And um, uh, I watched it, loved it. But when I saw that scene, I was like, those hands would have never worked anyway. <laughs> they were like made out of wax. <laughs> because when he fell through, through, and through Edward's uh, hands, they just went through like butter. <laughs> Like the the like Edward wasn't like doing this. He wasn't making the snow. He was just standing here like yeah, and they just <laughs> slid right down. Yep. It's, it's like okay, either uh, those, either those claws are razor sharp or they they fucking were made out of butter. But yeah, yeah uh, the, the, Manuel, oh. what were you saying? The guy's yes. name was the it, whose Price? last movie? It's Vincent Price. Thank you. I knew I got his first name wrong. No, I yeah, knew I got his Vincent first. Name. Yeah. And uh, that yes, that is indeed his last movie. Yeah, it Vincent... was. He, fun fact: it was actually supposed to be the Doctor Frankenstein in the Night Before Christmas, but he died before it yes. became in. This. Yes. So oh. he that would have been his last movie. That's why uh, inadvertently it kind of looked like him as a Doctor Frankenstein, but he, ended up going to that uh, another person. He was a. Uh... Probably the thing everyone knows him for, even if you've never seen his movies, as great movies. By the way, next Halloween we'll probably watch uh, either House on Haunted Hill or like I Am Legend because those are also in public domain. Or we can watch Little Shop of Horrors. I think it's also that's also a public domain. It'll be a fun. Those are also fun movies. They're good movies, not like just other cheap public domain movies to watch. I do Little Shop action as I said it, but um, but you might know Vincent Price. He does the he does the the funk of forty thousand years. or what the line is Grizzly from Thriller. Ghouls from every tomb. Every... Oh, Fun oh, fact. Um, I, I was at a I was at a panel. This will be the last thing I say. Then we could just wrap it up, wrap it up, like with last thoughts. I was at this panel with John Landis. Um, by the way, he's also a monster. So is Michael Jackson, I think. But uh, John Landis no, is, like kills kids anymore. on Twilight Zone. But uh, John Landis is a monster. But yeah, I. He's a um, but I, I was, I, and he also did some other fuck shit. But anyways, looked it up on your own. But I was at a panel that John Landis was at, um, and he was talking about um, uh, the this time on Thriller. By the way, he directed the Thriller music video. If you didn't know that, he also directed like American Wolf in London, other movies. Um, and he was saying how um, during the whole time, <laughs> oh God, I shouldn't make this joke. Actually, I'm not gonna make this joke. It's very, un, it's very. Un, <laughs> I'll, make, I'll tell you guys this joke later. Anyways, TLDR, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just. It had to do with him meeting up with Vincent Price and them um, discussing money that Michael Jackson owned them. And uh, actually, I'll just say because I, I won't mention like you can look this up the details on your own. Like um, apparently, uh, Vincent Price uh, never got paid for his part. Um, I think the current legend is that he did it for free, like like the kind of his of his heart. But according to John Landis, who had, who who was still alive, uh, Vincent Price isn't with us anymore. 
um, he says that he didn't do that. They just didn't pay him. And he, when he ran into him again, he's all like, have you, have you seen Michael lately? Um, Vint, uh, Vincent Price to John Landis. John Landis like, no, I haven't seen him. I think he's like in his own, like, you know, nonsense right now. Cause he had legal troubles. Look that up on your own. And, Vince, and Vincent Price is all like, I don't know about any of that, but I know he sure did. Fuck me. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was, um, that, that, that was, that was apparently what Vincent Price said to John Landis. I probably should have said a joke, but there I said it. Uh, Christmas. Let's wrap it up. Last Christmas movie, JD. You guys over- went through most of them I had. Uh, I was going to mention Die Hard, but we kind of went over that. Uh, I guess there's... Shane Black movies are almost always around Christmas, so... That's Who's what Shane Lethal Black? We- the director of uh, Lethal Weapon and Iron Man 3. Oh. I did not... Oh, Lethal Weapon. Isn't that also Christmas? Yeah. Yes. He likes setting up <laughs> movies around is, Christmas. Yeah. Why is that? That's so weird. I mean, he's just like me. That's if I got a thing. It's like, yes, it's Christmas time, and here we go. Uh, Christmas time. I think it's the, the Charlie Brown one, isn't it? Anyways, we didn't mention Home Alone. What the fuck is wrong with us? You're right. I mean, everyone talks about Home Alone. Home Alone is like, it's like, it's like a uh, Christmas cookie. Everyone eats. Everyone knows about it, and everyone. But unlike, in, well, I guess because like they, they, they didn't bust the TBS and show that at like 24 hours a day, but that's an old Christmas movie that's almost... Uh, overplayed but it's still good um in my opinion um also netflix not netflix disney plus just re- just remake like rebooted the series i think it's called like home alone home sweet home alone called. there you go home sweet home alone and that movie's terrible i watched it the other day um i actually didn't know it was new i thought they remade it earlier i thought this is like home alone 6 they made in like 2016 no they remade it this year uh, they made it this year. They, it was like their whole, and I'm like, it feels like one of those terrible, uh, which it is, but it feels like one of those terrible Home Alone remakes and we remake sequels and no one ever talks about. By the way, I liked Home Alone three, even though I want to say that wasn't a Christmas movie. I feel like that didn't take place on Christmas. It's been years since. Yes, I've seen it did. Oh, it did. It's been all, years. All Home, since play, all Home Alone movies are Christmas time, so no matter what, it's it's a Christmas movie. I the also. Real fast, I love part two. For some reason, no one likes that one. I think it's just the internet again. Um, I loved part two. Part I actually like part two more than part one because that's the one I really grew up with, and that's also the one that had the talk boy, which they released a real one of, and I wanted it and I never got it. If anyone has one, they want to send it to me. I will love you forever. And uh, yeah, that's Home Alone. Those are on Disney Plus, I think. And Macaulay Culkin is doing pretty well these days. And uh, I remember like when he was doing kind of his like uh, comeback tour a couple years ago and he was like appearing in everyone's like YouTube videos and he was in the AVGN uh, Christmas one. Yeah. Uh, where he was playing was the a... boys. Like, huh? It was the home alone game too. So yeah, that's why he was in it. That, that was a, that was a good episode. Did you go watch the, the AVGN one? We was all like, yes, it's me, the pizza boy. I always, every so often, like with my, with like some of my friends who've, see, who've seen the AVGN one, I keep referencing that, yes, the pizza boy. I keep referencing the way he says pizza boy. Macaulay yeah. Culkin does, I mean. But anyways. Uh, that, yeah. Can I sorry, you uh, talk about his uh, comeback tour, I guess, or whatever you're calling it for mm-hmm. uh, one second? It's like, I think he let the internet decide his new middle name. I think the most popular one, even if it got thrown out, was Macaulay Culkin. So his name would be Macaulay Macaulay Culkin Culkin. It's funny because like when he was, he also showed, he also showed up on some other AVGN stuff. Like he was on one of those movie thingies they were doing back in the day, and well, not AVGN, Cinemassacre, I should say. And this sounds stupid because you know his name is Macaulay Culkin. I'll never forget that name. But what kind of first name is Macaulay? I, I feel like that's. <laughs> Like, I, I can't imagine being a child named Macaulay. That just sounds like a no offense to whoever's culture that name is probably from, but it just like the it just sounds it sounds like another last name to me and to my ears. I think because the Makka, you know, part. But yeah, that was a weird way to describe the Makka. But yeah, also I think it's with Brenda Song now, which is uh, yep, which which is great. Uh, she she's uh she's in she's just in this terrible horror movie I saw recently, but she, she she's uh what the fuck was that show she was in? The, the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Zach and there Cody. you go. <laughs> there you go. I'm like that's what I really know her from is from that bullshit. So it's like two child actors like you know um uh doing good shit now. Everyone go 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 follow Macaulay. Also Macaulay, you know that that glitter bomb prank that kind of was famous with like the porch pirates the people uh, macaulay culkin was in one of the glitter bomb ones for like uh 
one one of the because he the, whoever the fuck does that glitter bomb prank for Christmas does it every year, and he was in one of the he was in one like during his comeback tour thing. Anyway, anyway, I guess that'll wrap it up. That's our show, everyone. I see we, we we did pretty well. We 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 stayed on topic. Uh, the first part of the show was lost. Maybe I'll just like I said, I'll, I'll tempt HBO gods and like just steal the fucking. <laughs> So and I'll just cut it where the sound came back in. <laughs> um, speaking of which, we didn't even mention like the Christmas horror movies. I wanted to talk about Silent Night and Deadly Night. There's a lot of other, like the actual horror movie Silent Night and Light, which and part two of Silent Night Deadly Night. Sorry, I can't say those words too fast together. Part Barbie two is the King. yes, it's the one that everyone, <laughs> even if you've never seen it, you know it. You've seen it on the internet because it's like garbage day. <laughs> <laughs> then he shoots the kid or whatever, but yeah. Oh man, I I love that clip because even though it's part of Silent Night Deadly Night Part Two and he's supposed to be a killer Santa Claus, he's not in a Santa Claus outfit. So if you watch it out of context, which most people do, you don't know it's part of a Christmas horror movie. Um, but anyways, there's a lot of others, but I guess that's next year we'll do Christmas horror movies maybe, and I'll, I'll do because this is actually a whole world of those. I think Goldberg played an evil Santa one time. As in Bill Goldberg, the wrestler. I think he played yeah. an evil Santa in like Santa. I think it was called Santa Slays or Sleigh Bells or some no, shit no, like no, that. Santa Slays. Was Santa Slays? Yeah, he uh, he played a fucking killer Santa in one of those movies. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Funny, uh, and, a Jewish person playing the evil Santa Claus. Hmm. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I forget. I'm like Goldberg. I didn't even think about that. Um, also, just last. I, oh, I didn't put it in my background because this thing was here. Um, I thought I had Ginger Dead Man behind me still. Oops. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gary Busey as the as the killer gingerbread man. Anyway, by is the way, Chris, is that huh? a Christmas one? Well, it's gingerbread, gingerbread is Christmas. Is, gingerbread is a Christmas cookie. It's funny because I I don't know I don't know if you guys have ever like had gingerbread as a child. Um, oh, that's the, that's my favorite. I, I have never... to make gingerbread cookies every year. No, 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 I've never had gingerbread cookies until recently. Like, okay, like not like last week, but like the past five years, and they're really spicy. Like, not like hot spicy, obviously, but like there's a kick to a gingerbread cookie, and it's like, ooh, I guess it's the ginger, by the way. But it's just like, oh man, that, that's a that's a spicy cookie right there. <laughs> just want to throw that out there. That's my my gingerbread thing. I, I'm a fan of sugar cookies for Christmas. Give me a sugar cookie with like granulated sugar on the top and, and uh, I fucking love it. Anyways, um, let's wrap it up. Week, Emmanuel. Um, tomorrow is ultra... Uh, <laughs> tomorrow's ultra podcasting. No, it's not. Tomorrow A-to-J is A-to-J Adventures. A-to-J plays. A-to-J Adventures. Yes, not A-to-J plays. A-to-J Adventures. Fun fact, we're going to play... We're going to we're gonna play the game that literally created the show. Um, Wild Arms 2. Uh, even though what? we spent like literally six months playing Wild Arms one, um, <laughs> we actually wanted to play two. That was the whole, and then we decided to do one because you know might as well start the first one. Um, but no, two is the good one, quote unquote, the good one, and that's the one we've been wanting to play. And we started playing it during Halloween, but then it felt weird, so we played Devourer instead. So, um, and then we just never, we never finished it. So we're gonna play it at least for the next two, three weeks before we go into winter break. So we're definitely playing it tomorrow, though. So tune into that Wild Arms two. And uh, I'm going to wax mad nostalgic about that game because we didn't do that last time. And then um, Friday is Drink Talk Roll. It's with Pleiades. Fun fact, not fun fact, but interesting fact, that might be the last one of the year. Um, just because uh, scheduling. I, I think that I think we might just... So if you want to watch that, just watch it on Friday. Because um, the next time we're going to meet for a D&D thing, we might just plan out a D&D panel. There was a Christmas special we have planned. And if we do that, we'll do that again, but we'll see. And that's that. Next Tuesday, we're coming back. Kina will be here. Hopefully, Nyar will be here. And we're going to discuss um, end of year uh, things and 2022 things and all that good nonsense because we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Can you believe it's almost 2022? I'm still fucking... I know it's a meme and I know it's a dead meme because it's been so long we've been saying this, but I swear to God, I'm still processing 2020. <laughs> Insane. And it's like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Anyway. Mm-hmm. I spent anyway. enough time inside that 2020 was just another year, basically. <laughs> Pretty much. Oof. Anyway, um, yeah, support us Patreon, patreon.com, strategic connections. Uh, if you're going to ALA, uh, keep an eye out for us. We've got three panels going on there. I'm going to start making Facebook pages for them. They're already updated on the website. We always put our schedule on the website. We don't talk about that anymore because we haven't been to cons in two years. 
but um, <laughs> but the schedule's there so far. It still has to be updated, but I put. I'm not gonna lie. I put the panel names and times there on the website, the ADJ site, so I can remember because now they're on one place that I can't fuck with. You know, it's oh, I guess technically I can go in there and just delete the whole thing, but like it's on a part of the. It's on something like a hard copy almost. So yeah, um, support Patreon. The the new Super Patreon Mario video with me playing uh through Super Mario Land Two. The Golden Coins is up. Um, sorry that was up a little late. It's still November, but I wanted it up like last week. But it was all this bullshit because my computer that's still ongoing. Um, next week, I mean next week, next month, I'm gonna be playing Wario Land, and I'm gonna finish the Game Boy trilogy. And then starting with next year, we're probably gonna start having guests appear in some of them. So yeah, it, it'll be a lot. Uh, it'll be a little different. It'll be a lot of fun, and uh, at least hopefully it's fun. And that's that. Shout out to Ed, shout out to Ed and Kenneth, our current patrons, and uh, shout out to all of you who are like commenting subscribing and watching that's it mary right. uh mary mary crimbus happy holidays happy hanukkah yeah and happy, happy holidays to everyone else happy holidays happy happy everything happy happy december peace out love you all yeah peace bye out.